Recently I decided it was a good idea to start yet another project that would use up all my free time and this time I wanted to build a small solar powered weather station or as I call it Zovesta which kind of sounds like something you would buy at IKEA. To start things off, I composed a list of values I want to quantify from which I could then derive a list of sensors to use for my project. Most important for me are temperature, humidity and air pressure as well as light intensity or even UV. Measuring precipitation would be also nice to have. Wind speed and direction should be supported but I'm not very keen on those yet. Another cool thing would be lightning detection and storm distance. Therefore, I selected the BME 280 temperature, humidity and pressure sensor, the BH1730 ambient light sensor, the Hydrion RG15 optical rain gauge and the AS3935 Franklin lightning sensor. I also want to support the HT31 temperature and humidity sensor, the SCD40 CO2 temperature and humidity sensor, as well as these generic RJ11 tipping bucket wind speed and wind direction sensors. As for the solar panel, I'm reusing this 3 watt 5 volt one from another project. Next I designed a circuit and PCB using KiCad. Since the weather station is going to be solar powered, I decided to use the BQ24074 lithium battery charger and power path management IC in conjunction with an 8650 lithium cell and holder. To measure the battery voltage, I'm using a simple voltage divider. To be able to read all sensor values, process them and send them to my home automation, I decided to use an ESP32 C3 Mini 1, which has one of the newer RISC-V processor cores and natively supports USB without any extra components. Therefore, I only added a USB-C connector for programming. I also included all previously mentioned sensors and added some extra ESD protection, since the device will be located outside 24-7. While designing the PCB, I decided it would be beneficial to make all the sensors detachable and allow the supplied voltage to be selectable. At this stage, I also decided how the PCB would be mounted in the yet-to-be-designed housing. This influenced the placement of the sensors, ensuring that temperature sensors were positioned as low as possible to minimize heat buildup, affecting their readings. Consequently, the microcontroller and charging circuit were placed in the top section, which not only helps with thermal management, but also improves Wi-Fi reception. Then I sent the design files to today's sponsor, JLC PCB, and just a few days later, my manufactured and assembled PCBs arrived. This project wouldn't be possible without JLC PCB, the go-to manufacturer for high-quality and affordable PCBs. With over 15 years of experience, they offer 5 PCBs for just $2, fast 24-hour production and even assembly services to make bringing your designs to life easier than ever. Check out jlcpcb.com and order yours today. Next I had to solder some components which I deliberately did not let JLCPCB assemble since I had leftovers from other projects. After that I started to work on the software. This time I wanted to try something different and use ESP Home. It not only integrates seamlessly with Home Assistant, but you only have to write a simple YAML file for each device. This gets converted to code and flashed onto the device, which makes managing multiple devices very easy. This would spare me from writing a lot of code, so I thought, but then I found out that the BH1730 ambient light sensor was not supported yet. So I had to write a new component, which was actually not that hard. I could orient myself on the already existing BH1750 component and had to write around 275 lines of code to get it working. Once I was happy with the YAML configuration, I wanted to flash the ESP32, but I had some issues with ESP Home running as an add-on in Home Assistant, which did not let me flash the device connected to my PC using the browser. Luckily, ESP Home thought of this and I ended up using a web flasher site, web.esphome.io, where I could upload and flash the binaries I got from my local instance. I also could have connected the ESP32 directly to the server running Home Assistant, but that would have been kind of a hassle. Next up was the housing, which took the most time to design, along with an update to the latest version of FreeCAD. At some point the older version simply gave up and refused to compute the model. I experimented with different designs, iterating on them to find the best balance between minimizing parts, ensuring easy assembly and creating a sturdy structure. I ultimately settled on a three-part design, a screen, a PCB mount and a pole mount. The screen is designed to allow airflow while preventing water ingress. The PCB mount screws directly into the screen, making it easy to attach to the pole mount. While the pole mount could have been integrated into the PCB mount, 
I opted to print it separately for added strength. Printing it in a different orientation also allows all parts to be produced without supports, saving both material and time. After all this, I somehow forgot to add a mount for the light sensor. It would have been best if it had a direct line of sight to the sun, but I suppose that's something to improve in the next version. To give you an idea of how much effort went into refining the design, here are all four iterations of the pole mount. The final version is not only sturdier than the third, but also reduces filament usage from 10.4 grams to 9.7 grams. For all parts I used ASA filament. Before bringing it all together and mounting the weather station, I decided to coat the PCB with a layer of conformal coating to protect it from any water ingress. With that completed, it was finally time to mount the weather station outside. The rain sensor will have to wait until we move, as the roof above it would cause inaccurate readings anyway. Now only time will tell how well the weather station will perform. I hope you enjoyed the video. You can check out this project on GitHub, where you will find all the design files if you'd like to build your own weather station. Until then, take care, bye!